Welcome back to Nought to 60. So today we're going to be putting the EBAC Pro lowering spring kit on the 340i. Now, if you're going to be doing the DIY in this video, check out my other video on how to jack up the car because you need to know how to do that properly before you attempt anything like this. So to fit the springs, you're going to need a jack, axle stands, full socket set and spanners, and if you can get it an impact driver, I'll leave all the details in the description. Let's get into it. Now the car's jacked up safely and you've got the axle stands under the car, which you can see in the previous video if you don't know how to do that. We can get on and look at starting to fit the springs. So first and foremost, we want to remove that wheel. So coming to the top of the car with the engine and bay open, you can see the top of the suspension strut here. We're going to remove these plastic bits. There's three 10 mil plastic bolts there, so be gentle with those. Remove that. You will need to remove that plastic circlet with a pair of pincers. But it's not necessary, you can do this without with a ratchet. So 13mm. We're just going to loosen off these top nuts at the moment. So just crack all these nuts. So 10 mil spanner and that will release the plastic cover. Move that to somewhere safe. So next we're going to loosen the actual strut bolt on top because it's on the vehicle. So we're just going to loosen this off with an 18 mil. I'm going to be using an impact driver. It's really handy to have an impact driver for, for this job, to be fair. So yeah, just give it a couple of rattles, just so you can see that nut has now loosened, it's moved. So we know that we can, when we come back to it later on when it's off the car, it will be easier to remove. So an E18 Torx bit for here. That's just to remove the brace bar. And keep your bolts or nuts somewhere safe where you know you can get them later. I normally put them in a bag. So now we've loosened up the bolts at the top, we're going to come down under the car to the suspension. You can see that there's several parts that are attached to the suspension, so we're going to remove those. These are rubber, so use two hands and push away from you to release them. and they curl under at the bottom there as well so take note of that so you need them completely loosened off of the, the shock absorber so over to the left hand side and behind because we've got adaptive suspension on this car we've got some little plugs which need to be removed they're a simple pinch and pull you can see there the little clip in there that you need to push to release. And then it's exactly the same on the one behind. Just push that in and give it a good pull downwards. 
Sometimes if they're difficult, a little flathead screwdriver is quite handy to, to put in for that. Right, next we're going to take the nut off of the end of this linking rod. You can see the, the back side of it there. So for this one, T30 Torx. It's an idea to give these a spray with WD-40 also just to let it seep in. Now you can turn the steering so you've got a bit more room here to move. But But I didn't need to because I've got the ratchet Torx bit. A little bit of WD as I said just to help it move along. And off she pops. And that was a 15mm spanner. And out it pops. Now we've done that, we're going to move to under the car. Now you can see there's a nut head on the end of the bolt here. This is at the bottom behind the shock absorber. So you need to get your spanner on there. And you ratchet on the other side and release because it's actually pinching around the shock to hold it in place. I couldn't quite get the camera in whilst doing it, but yeah, you get the idea that bolt and nuts got come off and removed. Once that's off, remove anything that's remaining. So this, this piece just slides in that slot to keep it in place. So just remove that to give you a bit more room. We're going to be opening up that slot in a minute to be able to release that shock absorber. So there are tools specific for this, but if you're like me, I haven't got that tool. A nice flat head screwdriver will be opening that up lovely. So slide it up into the slot where you took that bolt out and then gently give it a tap from the bottom and that will open that pinch ring that's holding in the shock absorber as you can see here so now that's opened up you can see that it's already slidden down put your foot on it give it a good push and it'll pop off the end so there we go. Now the shock absorber and the whole suspension arm is free. So we're going to move back up to the top of the car. I've got an impact driver as I said so I'm just going to remove the remaining bolts. When you get to the last bolt you just put one hand underneath and grab the shock absorber so it doesn't fall to the floor when you remove that last bolt. So there we go, that is the full suspension arm now able to be removed underneath just be very careful don't go hitting your paintwork on your arches so now we've got the suspension arm off we're going to be using the spring compressors to compress the spring to then to be able to release the strut and spring from the suspension word of advice on this one just take your time don't rush it because this is the part that can hurt you. If that spring comes undetached from the spring compressors, it can just completely fly in any direction. So be extra careful when you're doing this part of the job. 
So we want to get the spring compressors so you can actually get on the end of it that you're going to be turning with a ratchet or impact driver. So I normally go from the bottom. So the spring compressor is facing upwards to the top of the suspension. And you really want to try and get these as equal as possible on the spring. Once you've got them nice and even, start tightening them up one side a few turns at a time to compress that spring. You'll know when you've got it to the point you can remove the top nut because the spring will move freely side to side and possibly up and down slightly. So once we've got the spring compressed, we're going to then move back to releasing that top nut. Now to do this, the spring is compressed. You know it is because it's moving slightly on the suspension arm, up and down and left and right. I'm going to use the impact driver and I'm doing it in this position because if the spring for any reason has, has become tight, once I release that nut, it will spring away from me and the impact driver. So it's a good position to put yourself in just in case there's any issues. So I'm using an impact driver here. You can use a, a spanner, a ring spanner and a Allen key, but the impact driver works best. Once that nuts off, you can then remove the top mount. Now on my top mount it was just very tight on there so it needed a little persuasion so a little knock just with the, the hammer just pop that off. Now once that's off you'll see that the spring and all the the bump stops etc will just slide off of the shock. You can now undo those spring compressors to release the spring Again, do one side then the other. And there we have the old spring off the car. Now, because I'm low in the car and I've got obviously bump stops, I'm actually cut mine down. I've just cut the very last bit off because I don't want it bottoming out. You can buy bump stops, you can buy F80 bump stops, but on this front section I've just cut mine down that's that's entirely up to you if you want to do that so here's the new springs front and rear now if you actually take a closer look at the new spring you'll see that there's an extra coil in it it's a, a little bit shorter but there is actually an extra coil which is good because it makes it easier to use the spring compressors and compress that new spring. So that's exactly what we're going to do next. I'm just going to show you here that the spring needs to sit correctly when you're putting it on. You can see that there's an indent here for the bottom of the spring to sit in. So yeah, it's critical that you get that seated in the right position when we're putting it all back together. So popping the bump stop and the protective sleeve back on, we're now going to go ahead and compress the new spring. So exactly as we did before, a few turns each side to get that spring compressed enough to put the top mount back on and do that back up. I actually found it easier just to take the spring back off and, and do the spring compressors off of the unit. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, nice and easy each side, as even as you possibly can. And you'll see that spring compressing nicely. So once you've got that nicely compressed, 
We're going to pop it back on, make sure that it's lined up and seated correctly, like I showed you earlier. Pop back the bump stop and the protector, and then just slide the top mount back on. That sits nicely on there. Once the top mount's seated, just grab the nut, get that on. Now what you'll find is, sometimes you can do it with the impact drive and that will tighten right up. But other times, the shock will spin underneath. So just get the nut on as at the minimum of the nut depth so it should be flush with the top of the the shock bolt if that makes sense to you because when you release those spring compressors you can see the top bolt there sticking through the nut when you release those spring compressors it will hold it's no good just having it very lightly on there it needs to be at least the full nut on top of that bolt once you've got that, you can then go ahead gently and release the spring compressors like so. So now it's all back together with your new spring. We can get it back on the car by doing the process in reverse. You can see that it's nicely seated at the bottom there and on the top as well, the other rubber. It's lined up there as well. So we're ready to put it back on the car. So when you put it back on the car, you can see there's this metal stud that needs to slide back in that gap. It can only go in one way. Give it a good wiggle, that will slide in nicely. And then give it a hard push down and it will go back under that arch. But be careful of the arches. It's, it's good to get someone to give you a hand to do that if you can. So now we've got it back under, it's sitting nicely and it's seated properly. We're going to come back round to the rear of the shock. We're going to put this holding plate back in place which just slides in to the gap that we opened up earlier. So that just slides in there and then the bolt goes through that bracket and the pinch point and needs to be tightened up to hold everything back in place. Now replace the bolt, make sure it goes through the bracket, and get that one tightened up. So now we've got the bottom end tightened up, we can now move on to the top side of the strut to line that up and get the bolts in on the top end. Now to do that, what we're going to do is, we're going to make sure that the car's got a fail safe. So in this case I've got a wheel under the side of the car, and I've also got a second axle stand under the car. We're going to then use another axle stand to come under the suspension and go on the bottom of the swing arm and steering rack so when I lower the car it's going to raise the suspension this makes it a lot easier especially if you're on your own to be able to get all this lined up and bolted up on the top end so I'm going to show you what it looks like from underneath we're going to get the axle stand there you go, you can see it right on the end there, it's directly underneath. And then from the top side you can see there's a good inch gap or so where it's moving around. We can line that up with our right hand and then very gently undo the jack so it very slowly releases the pressure and lowers the car onto the suspension and you can get that lined up spot on by doing this 
So as you can see from the top end, everything is lined up perfectly. Now, as you can see here, there's a bit of a difference with the alignment on the drop link. So let's get the top bolted back up and we'll come back to that in a moment. So by jacking the car back up, you'll be lowering that drop link and be able to slide that back in. You may need to remove the axle stand underneath as well. So the more you jack the car up, the lower it should go. Once you've got it aligned, push it through, get the nut back on and get that done back up. There you go, it's just sticking through there, good push, then get the nut back on. Now I've got the nut on hand tight, I'm going to get everything else back on, so I'm going to line up all the cables and plugs, we're going to get everything in the position in exactly the same way that we took it off. And do remember it does loop over and slide into this bracket also. The right hand plug. Now everything's back on and in position. We're going to go through every nut and bolt and make sure everything's tightened up properly. Once it's all tightened up, we can then get the wheel and pop that back on. Move the axle stand back so you've got that second safeguard. We've removed the wheel from underneath now. So, yeah, pop the wheel back on. Remove the axle stand and lower the car. Now replace the black plastic. Do make sure it slots in on the top area and make sure the rubber is over the top. A bit fiddly with one hand but you get the gist of it. Place that rubber over, it slides over the top here. Give it a firm push so it slots in. Then we've got those three plastic 10mm nuts just to tighten up to secure. Now moving on to the rear of the car, crack those nuts off, get it jacked up, wheel off, obviously make sure you use your second fail safe axle stand underneath. Now there's a plastic cover underneath the car so we're going to need a 10mm long socket for this. There you can see the axle stands safely holding the car if that jack fails. There's four 10mm nuts inside this plastic cover that need removing. So you can do this by hand. Just get those four nuts loose and removed and that plastic cover will come off. So now we've got the nuts and the plastic cover off and out the way, 
you can see that there's these two bolts here and they're the two bolts that are holding on the suspension and the swing arm now to, we're going to remove those and then just remove that spring so the rear is a lot more simple than the front the bottom of the spring sits on a rubber and you can see here that there's two holes and there's a little poking part of the rubber that pushes through so that's your alignment when you're putting it back on here's another view of the other side of the bolts which we're going to be removing a bit of WD won't go amiss just to spray those to help loosen them for removal so to give myself a bit more room I'm actually going to remove the jack and pop in another axle stand under here so I've got a bit more room to move around under the car so we're going to need an E20 female torque socket we're also going to need a 21 mil socket or spanner an 18 mil spanner and a 18 mil socket to remove these two bolts underneath again if you've got an impact driver it just really helps to speed up the process so get both of those bolts removed now if you're struggling to remove the bolts you might find just very gently getting the jack underneath and lifting it slightly will release the pressure on the bolts to be able to remove them So come and have a look underneath, you can see both of these two bolts are now removed. And this now allows you to push down and remove the old spring. You can hit, see here that the shock's nice and loose and that you'll be able to push down on there. An extra pair of hands is always helpful, but as you can see, I'm managing here to, to do it on my own. Get it in the right angle and it will slide out nicely. So good look at the old spring here. You can see that this is the top end and this is the bottom end and the same as the front. These pieces only go one way. They need to be lined up when putting in the new spring. So grab the top rubber, make sure it's lined up and the spring fits nicely inside and again the bottom rubber same again lines up perfectly like so so just to point out again you can see the small locating hole for the bottom rubber of the spring when you're putting it back in so make sure that that's located correctly so now the springs back in position get the top end in first and then you can move the bottom end whilst pushing down twisting or pushing backwards and forwards to get that locating pin on the bottom of the rubber in place and there we have it springs back in and ready to go now we just got to get these two bolts back in to complete the rear suspension now again the jack is helpful here to be able to maneuver uh, it up and down to get things lined up um, also 
you normally get one bolt in easy and then the other one's a bit more difficult. So a screwdriver um, in the end to line things up to get the bolt started is, is always a helpful solution to that. You can see I've managed to get that done here. And then finally, I had to just get a larger screwdriver in, in this position and lean down on it to get that lined up and pulled through. So there's a couple of things that may help you then to get those last bolts back through. Once they're through, get them tightened up. So just before we do go and put the wheel back on, just have a final check over everything. Make sure you're happy that everything's done and tightened back up properly. Nothing's out of place. Then we can pop the wheel back on, remove that axle stands and lower the car back down. And now all we've got to do is do it all over again on the other side. But once you have, you can then stand back and admire the new lowered 340i on the eBay Pro Kit. If you've enjoyed this video and it's given you a good insight to help you to fit your suspension to your car, hit that subscribe button and give it a like. We've got loads of other content on here for DIYs on the BMW platform. There's also some other cars that we've done some DIYs on. So do check all those out. And if you like a bit of speed, check out who's the fastest because I'm up against subscribers like you in your cars to see who can get to 0 to 60 first. So yeah, check out the other videos and I'll see you soon.